morning. Uh, so I, I'll just ask you a quick question just before I start talking about health and technology and all these fun things. Uh, how many people in this room smile more than 20 times per day? Raise your hand if you do. Nice. How many people in this room smile fewer than five times per day? Raise your hand if you do. Oh, that's great. Because outside of this room, actually, more than a third of us smile more than 20 times per day, where less than 14% of us smile less than five. And why am I talking about smiling all of a sudden? So I spent the last few months, I spent a lot of time researching smiling. I gave a TED talk about smiling earlier this year and really realized that this is a fascinating subject. You know, Charles Darwin realized more than 100 years ago that smiling actually makes us feel better rather than being merely a result of feeling good. Actually, researchers in the UK discovered that if smiling is as rewarding to our brain as eating 2,000 bars of chocolate. <laughs> actually, they actually also measure brain activity in the frontal lobe uh, when receiving cash, and they were able to compare one smile to more than 16,000 pounds sterling in cash, which is like 25 grand a smile, which is not bad. If you want to learn more about that, go watch my TED talk. But I, today I'm going to talk about uh, something else. Today I'm going to talk about trust sourcing in health. And I started talking about smiling because I believe that health is not only about health and bits and bytes and technology and medication, but it's also about care. And smiling keeps us positive. And for patients, it's really, really important. So I'm very happy to be here at the e-patients conference and talk about things that are positive and about change that I believe will make a big difference in the life of patients. So, you know, it's not that easy to be a patient. Where do patients go today when they have a problem? Well, they go to a doctor, right? But 70% of us don't have the same day access to our doctors. And 51% of us would like a, our doctor to actually know us better. 60% of us wish that we had more time with our doctor. So it's not that easy to find a doctor. So what do people want? What people really want, and we did a lot of research on that, is they want access. They want to be to access to their doctor. They want personal care. They want something about there. And Tanya talks about personalization. We'll talk about it a little bit more in, the, in, the, in this presentation. They want it to be personal. They, they want it to be about them. And they have answers to questions, because health always starts with a question, a query, a problem. So where do they go if not to a doctor, because there's not enough access? Where? They go to the internet, right? More than 80% of us go to the internet before we go to the doctor or between doctor visits. So we have a solution. We really don't need to go to a doctor anymore because the internet has all the information we need. So there was a very interesting study that was published about uh, a year ago by Pew Internet. Some of you may be familiar with Pew. And Pew Internet asked people how useful or how helpful is the information that they found on the internet in health. And just to give you a little bit of numbers, Google alone serves more than 1.2 billion searches on health a month. So that's a big, big, a big, big population that they're serving. So they gave people four options between very helpful, somehow helpful, not so helpful, and no help at all, which is the information that they found on the internet in health. How many people in this room believe that 10% of people said no help at all? Raise your hand if you, if you think it's 10% of people. How about 20% of people said no help at all about health information? One person. How about 30%? One more person here. 40? 50? And the silent majority? The other way around. So this is the result of the study was published in March 24, 2010, and it broke the population into people with chronic conditions and non-chronic conditions that went to the internet for health information. And they found that 48% of people with no chronic conditions and 59% of people with chronic conditions find the health information that they find on the internet of no help at all. So there are some high quality websites out there, like Health Central, and we heard from Chris Shorter before, that are up there in the major help. But they're the minority of the site, right? We have a lot of sites, a lot of message boards out there that create this problem that most of the people that actually go to the internet for health information, more than half of us, think that it's useless. Why? 
Anyone wants to guess? We did a lot of research on this and found a lot of answers. Why do, why do you think it's, this is the case? Anyone? Too much information, more. Not great for consumers, more. Not personal enough. Not personal enough. Tanya talked about that, more. They don't use the right word. They don't have the language that they may speak that they need. But any, anyone else had a, has an idea on this? OK, thank you. Trust was the biggest one. The biggest one that came of all the reasons, and personalization was definitely one of them, but trust was the biggest one. We have a problem trusting the health information that we find. Once again, there are a few sites out there that do have some physicians there, and they do have information that is valid, but there are very, very few of them. And trust was a big issue in our research. So what's missing? Anyone wants to guess? It's too early in the morning. For me, it's like 6.58 in the morning. How about you guys? <laughs> Any, yeah, go ahead. Wow, you should come and give the talk from me. <laughs> the doctors are not online. Where are they? Why are they not engaged in the health conversation? So if physicians are the ones that we actually trust, in our research we found that the one entity in healthcare that people really trust is the physician. Why aren't the physicians at large online? And not just the physician who writes regularly about health because he's a great writer and that's the minority of them, but why isn't your physician online? And maybe your physician is online, but maybe he's on a doctor site. Right? You know, the rating sites for doctors on the internet, right? The, the ones where you can find a doctor according to the decor in their waiting room, which was awesome, or people waited too much, too long for, for the visit, or the, the receptionist was not kind enough, and these are the reviews that you find on rating sites for doctors, because these are the doctor sites on the internet. What if physicians had virtual practices? So not just real practices in the real world, like they do have today, but every physician, including your physician, would have also a virtual practice where he could or she could answer patient questions, offer useful tips, and curate and validate health information that he or she trusts most. We believe that then we would have interactive health. If we had interactive health, patients would have trust which is what they're missing right now, they, had more, they would have con more control on their health, and they would have instant 24-7 access to their doctor or to other doctors that they trust, anytime, anywhere. The new era of interactive health. The folks from Forbes asked me a few months ago to write an article for them, and it's online. I encourage you to take a look at it. It's called The New Era of Interactive Health. And I identified five interesting forces that came together in the, in the past three to five years that make it possible for us to look for a paradigm shift. What was not possible three to five years ago, it's possible now because these forces came together. The first one, how many people in this room has, have a smartphone or a tablet? Almost everyone. Everyone smiles and everyone has a smartphone and tablet. That's awesome. Um, so almost all of us have very powerful computing devices in our pockets, right? That they're not only computing devices and connectivity devices that help us connect with one another, they also have dozens of sensors that help us co collect information, and Chris Schroeder talked about that before, and that's a really great opportunity, right, that is related to health. They're connected 24-7 to the cloud, right, not only to other people, and that's extremely powerful. And that's the fifth bullet point here, Right? And data and cloud enable us to do things today that we could not even imagine five years ago. Right? When I built Wealthsphere, if we had to do some data processing right, and storage in the way that we're doing them today, we would have had, be, we had to be Google. Today, you could do the same level of processing that only Google could do five, six years ago on a laptop and using some open source you know, Hadoop or Cloudera and do it on a laptop, which is what we can do today. We couldn't do it five years ago. The social conversation, how many of you are on Facebook? Twitter? Awesome. If I, had, if I asked this question five, six years ago, how many people here would answer the same question the same way? 
we are now interacting with each other online. We don't just go online to find health information or any other information. There's actually a conversation. And actually, the interesting thing that we discovered is that your doctor is actually online, engaging their health conversation, most likely on Facebook, but never about their practice. Because doctors don't want to mix their personal lives with their patient's life, with their professional lives. The last thing that I want to mention about interactive health is game dynamics and game mechanics, because it's the first time ever that we are able to engage tens of millions of people worldwide for hours and hours and hours doing something using a web interface or a mobile interface in ways that were not possible before. And some of these learnings can be implemented to create new health applications that are much more engaging. So I, we believe that today you can take the advantages of both sides, the advantages of the doctor visit, which is trusted and personal, but you know, expensive, lots of friction, lots of time. And on the other hand, take the free, immediate, and unlimited access that the internet provides us and put them together into a new solution. So where do, where do we get, how do we get there? We believe that you need three things in order to get there. Personalization, Tanya talked about that. Virtualization and gamification. Personalization, and I'm not gonna repeat what Tanya said, but every one of us is a different person. Are there doctors in the room? Raise your hand if you're a doctor. Thank you. So what, what are the first two words the doctors answer to almost every health question? So I'll ask you, can I take this medication? Can I use, can I, should I do this procedure? It depends. It depends. Right? Can I take the, this medication? It depends. Are you old, young, first trimester, second trimester? Did you have cancer before? Are you healthy? Are you pregnant? Well, it depends. Right? So that's very important for us when we create a solution to personalize it to people because different people have different attributes and they're very different from one another. So one solution fits all would not be good. The second thing that we're offering is virtualization. And this whole idea that I spoke before about of taking part of the doctor visit and virtualizing, you know, this annoying part that physicians repeat patient after patient after patient 15 times per day, especially the specialist, for smart people like physicians, that's kind of annoying, right? And why do they need to do it in a doctor visit that is eight minutes per visit? Because this is what insurance is paying for, right? Why don't take part of the standardized part of the doctor's visit and virtualize it and make it available, do it once and make it available for the rest of the doctor's career because most of health and healthcare is evergreen. So if we did that, we had very amazing network effects among doctors because all of a sudden doctors will share their information not only with patients, but with one another. So there's some great dissemination of information with other patients. And finally, doctors will be able to be found on the internet according to their knowledge and not according to the decor in their waiting room, which is much more powerful for us as patients, right? So thinking about from a patient perspective, how amazing would it be if there were all our doctors would be online answering questions, providing tips that are standardized in nature, but they are now in the cloud, findable by us as patients. But more than that, what if other physicians would actually endorse or agree with other doctors in order to take some of the content into their virtual practices? What if there was a button there that the doctor could look for other doctors' answers and say, oh, I agree with this guy, rather than writing the answer again, I'll agree with him, take the content into my virtual practice, give him kudos, and all of a sudden, as patients, we have the first opportunity ever to look at the health answer and to see if it's trustworthy, not by other patients who liked it. What does it mean, liking an answer by a doctor, but other physicians that validate this information? Are we gonna be more empowered as patients to get more visibility into this information. The last part that I want to suggest is gamification, and I'll go quickly. Gamification is not about creating games for health. I'm not suggesting you creating games for health. I'm talking about gamification more from a perspective of motivation theory. How can we put incentives in place in order to motivate people and in order to motivate physicians to do what they would do, right? So can we find the right incentives and provide them to physicians to engage and be more engaged in the online conversation? And we can talk about that. I, I see that I'm running out of time, so I'll be brief about that. 
but in a game like that for a physician to get them more engaged, can we help them enhance their reputation and get more recognition? Can, can we help them find more patients, right, like us, but help them find us when we need them most, right? Can we uh, create better relationships between the patient and the physician, right? Beyond the doctor visit, can we give us access as, as patient, but we'll also give the physician an opportunity to engage with us more often? And can we create more trust and higher quality of care by these interactions? Interactive health for patients will give us faster, easier access 24 seven, no need for doctor visits anymore. Trusted information for doctors at your fingertips, once again, no friction, and a lot of collective knowledge to work with. And interactive, interactive health for patients will add transparency, quality, and reliability, because now we see not only what one doctor thinks, but what a lot of doctors think. Better relationship with your physician and its physician network, because now you know who your physician trusts, and you have access to them, and personalized insights into your own care. So Trust Your Seeing Health Information is a provocative idea that we're working on at HealthTap, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm going to stay afterwards and tell you more about it, but thank you for listening. And uh, it was a pleasure to, uh, to introduce it to you. Thank you.